Dr. Minde discuss the histology of the respiratory um, system. So um, you need to understand that every system has the four tissues in the body. There is an epithelial lining, there is muscle, there is connective tissue, and there is nerve. Okay. So there are subdivisions of the respiratory systems. There are cells in the respiratory system. You need to understand the blood air barrier and the applied aspects. So the respiratory system has the upper airway and lower airway. So the upper airway helps with conditioning of air. That is to make it warm, humidify it and filter particles from it. After it has conditioned the air, that's the nasal cavity. You now the upper airway conducts the air to the lower airway, like what the trachea does. Then it's a lower part of the respiratory system, um, the lungs where gaseous exchange occurs. So you take in oxygen and remove carbon dioxide um, from the blood to the lungs and outside. So the respiratory system also helps with the perception of smell. The roof of the nasal cavity contains olfactory nerves. There is phonation as, uh, from the larynx, remember, um, from the trachea you get to the sorry from the larynx you get to the trachea before you get to the bronchi then there's the endocrine function yeah because of angiotensin um, converting enzyme that's produced in the lung it helps to convert angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2 which helps in the regulation of blood causing um, um, vessel constriction to raise the blood pressure so the air conditioning portion include the nasal cavity, nasal pharynx, the larynx, trachea, bronchi, the bronchioles, before you get to the terminal bronchioles. So air will move from the nasal cavity to the nasal pharynx, then to the larynx, to the trachea, to the bronchi. You have primary and secondary bronchi, then you get to the uh, respiratory bronchioles, terminal bronchioles. So these will help to condition the air and conduct it to the um, they conduct actually they condition the air and conduct the air so what are the adaptations of the conditioning portion so the conduction portion conduction portion has cartilage hyaline uh, mainly hyaline cartilage then there's the presence of muscle and elastic fibers this help uh, give it support these are connective tissues so they give support and flexibility there is also fibrisi in the nose like hair like structures for cleaning the air there is lining uh, mucus that lines the um, conducting portion and this helps to cleanse the air because the mucus traps the particles the goblet cells are the ones that secrete this mucus which helps to cleanse the mucus also helps to moisten the air then warming the air is done by um, the warm vascularization of the walls of this conducting portion so the conducting portion uh, such as the nasal cavity has a large surface area what increases the surface area in the nasal cavity the walls of the nasal cavity have shelf-like structures which you call the turbinate so they increase surface area and they are highly vascularized which helps to warm the air so all these are the adaptation of the conducting portion conducting portion mainly helps to um, condition the air Okay, and make it warm so that by the time it gets to the lung, it has no particles and it is warm and humidified so that it doesn't injure the lungs. Then from conducting portion, we go to the respiratory portion. Respiratory portion contains respiratory bronchioles, alveolar ducts, and alveoli which are used for gas exchange. So we have uh, muscles, or muscular elastic uh, apparatus that help with respiration. So muscles such as intercostal muscles, the diaphragm, um, we have accessory muscles such as thanocleidomastoid, serratus anterior, scalenus, all these help with uh, breathing. So they help um, um, with the mechanism of breathing that will allow air to move in and out of the lungs so you need to go to the lecture on mechanism of breathing um, in the gross lectures on mechanism of breathing to understand how these muscles perform their function so we'll start with the nasal cavity the nasal cavity is lined by pseudostratified columnar ciliated epithelium and it has nasal turbinates 
that increase surface area, warming and moisten the inhaled air, so it conditions the air. So we have two regions of the nasal cavity. There's the vestibule that is lined by the stratified square mass epithelium, and there is a nasal fossa that is lined by respiratory epithelium. Okay, vestibule around the anterior portion has stratified square mass epithelium, but the roof of the nasal cavity is lined by the respiratory epithelium. So we have mucus cells that are found in the lining of the nasal cavity to help moisten the air. So this slide just shows you the um, pseudostratified columnar ciliated epithelium with goblet cells. These are goblet cells. These are cilia, and you can see the nuclei are at different locations. So it's pseudostratified columnar. The nuclei are columnar. They're longer than they're wider. So pseudostratified columnar ciliated uh, epithelium with goblet cells. That's the same pseudostratified columnar ciliated with goblet cells. So this is the olfactory region and that you see in the olfactory region. You'll have olfactory cells for smell and support cells called sustentacular cells. And the olfactory epithelium also contains Bowman's glands. Bowman's glands produce serous fluids that are able to dissolve the odiferous substances. So as you inhale or smell perfume and a few minutes later you smell coffee, the Bowman's glands are able to quickly produce the serous fluid to wash off the odiferous substance of perfume so that you're also able to next uh, perceive the coffee. So basically, the olfactory epithelium has three cells. The olfactory cells for smell, support cells, which are sustentacular cells, and basal cells for regeneration. Then there's the presence of the Bowman's gland to dissolve odiferous um, substances. And the lining is pseudostratified, columnar ciliated with goblet cells. The pharynx. So from the nose, Nasal cavity air moves to the nasopharynx. So the pharynx connects the nasal cavity to the larynx and it depends on the extent of the abrasive forces on the epithelium. So the pharynx around the, is lined with respiratory epithelium in the nasopharynx. But as you go downwards to the oropharynx and hypopharynx, the epithelium now changes to stratified squamous. So nasopharynx has respiratory epithelium, okay, pseudostratified columnar, while oro and hypopharynx have stratified squamous epithelium. Then we have lymphocytes that are under the epithelium of the pharynx, and these help to trap or um, for immune function. Okay, so lymphocytes aggregate and accumulate as lymphoid tissue under the mucosa of the of the pharynx, and at the opening of the GI and the respiratory passages, they form tonsils. So you have palatine tonsils in the oropharynx and adenoid tonsils in the nasopharynx. So these are the nasal cavity and the pharynx actually form the upper respiratory passages. The larynx contain hyaline cartilage in the thyroid, cricoid, and arytenoid cartilages. They are made up of hyaline, while pulate and cuneiform have are elastic cartilages. So thyroid, cricoid, and arytenoid are hyaline, while epiglottis, corniculate, and cuneiform are elastic cartilages. Then the larynx, the wall of the larynx also has connective tissue. Then we have skeletal muscle. So you have the lining, which is mucous membrane. Then um, the wall is made up of striated skeletal muscle, connective tissue, and two types of cartilages, hyaline and elastic, and specifically as indicated. So the lining of the larynx is pseudostratified columnar ciliated epithelium. Then we get to the trachea, which is usually continuous with the larynx. So from the uh, pharynx, air enters the larynx and then from the larynx to the trachea. So the origin of the trachea is the lower border of the cricoid cartilage of the larynx. And this is consistent with the sixth cervical vertebra. The trachea is 10 to 12 centimeters long. So there's a lecture on the gross anatomy of the trachea. This is in the um, um, lecture video on the mediastinum. So you can go there and remind yourself on the gross of the trachea. But histology of the trachea, you have um, mucosa, which is the inner lining, followed by um, submucosa. So this mucosa is the one that contains epithelium. So the trachea has um, pseudostratified columnar ciliated epithelium with goblet cells. And the goblet um, cells are variable depending on the irritation of the epithelium. So where there's irritation, the goblet cells will be more. 
there is usually prolonged irritation of the epithelium that can occur in the trachea, leading to um, transformation. So you transform the epithelium from pseudostratified columnar ciliated to stratified squamous epithelium. So transformation of epithelium is usually called metaplasia. So you're changing from pseudostratified columnar to stratified squamous, we call that squamous metaplasia. The epithel after epithelium, okay, there is lamina propria. So pseudostratified columnar epithelium, then you underneath you find lamina propria. So these two together form the mucosa of the trachea. So the lamina propria usually contains loose connective tissue, elastic fibers, and neurovascular structures. Then the trachea, histology of the trachea, we continue, it contains cartilages. They're usually 16 to 20 hyaline cartilaginous rings. They are C-shaped. So 16 to 20 C-shaped hyaline cartilaginous rings. And they form a C, okay? So the free dorsal ends, the C points backwards. So the free dorsal ends of the Cs, okay? The free dorsal ends, those two, they are connected. So there's a connection at the back to complete the C. And they're connected by smooth muscle called trachealis muscle. So there's trachealis muscle and connective tissue fibers that um, con uh, um, complete the C posteriorly, the C uh, faces posteriorly. So you have connective tissue um, fibers made up of collagen and elastic. These form annular ligaments. So these longitudinal collagenous and elastic connective tissue fibers, the annular ligaments, they're able to link the cartilages. So they allow both lengthening and shortening of the trachea when you swallow or when there's movement of the neck. So when there's movement of the neck or swallowing, the trachea is able to lengthen or shorten. Why? Because the C-shaped cartilages are connected to each other by longitudinal annular ligaments. These are collagenous and elastic connective tissue fibers. The trachea bifurcates at the sternal angle of Louis to give two primary bronchi or the main bronchi. And their histology corresponds to that of the trachea. Epithelium, lamina propria, submucosa, then there's a tracheal, there's hyaline cartilage with trachealis muscle completing it at the back in the trachea. So this is the histology of the trachea, so the stratified columnar ciliated epithelium, the lamina propria here, the submucosa with submucosal um, mucus glands, and then look at the hyaline cartilage. Go back to the slide on cartilage to remind yourself on the features of hyaline cells in isogenous groups in groups of two to four and uh, clear or glassy matrix because collagen type two has the same refractive index as the uh, uh, ground substance, so the collagen fibers are invisible. This is the trachea, so the stratified columnar epithelium, the lamina propria, and submucosa before you get to the um, cartilage. Okay, this just shows you the airway, so that's the epiglottis. This is the larynx, the thyroid, the thyroid bone is here before you get to the thyroid cartilage. This is the cricoid cartilage. So lower border of cricoid is where the trachea begins. You can see anteriorly there are the tracheal rings. Then posteriorly, they are C-shaped. So the C's face posteriorly. And this is your trachealis muscle will be here completing the C's. So and this is anterior view. This is posterior view. This is the epiglottis. The hyoid bone is there. Thyroid cartilage, cricoid cartilage. Okay. Then the tracheal rings. So we say the trachea has 16 to 20 rings, then it will bifurcate at the sternal angle of Louis. And back to the anatomy of the trachea, we say the right main bronchus is shorter, wider, and more vertical than the left. So the left diverges at a greater angle from the midline than the right. So foreign bodies tend to dislodge towards the right because of those reasons. Okay. So these are the primary bronchi. The right is shorter, wider, and bronchi. Primary bronchi is the same as that of the um, the trachea. So pseudostratified columnar ciliated epithelium with goblet cells. The um, submucosa has serous mucus glands. There's hyaline cartilage and um, some smooth muscle fibers. The bronchioles will have simple columnar or cuboidal ciliated epithelium, but you start losing the goblet cells and smooth muscles increase, and there's the presence of clara cells in the bronchioles. So this is the histology of the bronchial smooth muscle cells. You start appreciating them, okay? So um, you can appreciate the epithelium also 
can be columnar 